<clears throat> Alright, Shalom. This is Harawan by Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Ka Halayim, Leahawa, by Hashim Yahawashai, by Hashim Havakakwadash, Mama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this is going to be a, um, a response to a brother in this camp. Uh, a, cod, a question he had on Daniel chapter 7 um, I just want to do a quick response to the brother alright um, this is let's go into it I put a couple precepts together just to edify on this topic alright so this is second this is Daniel chapter 7 verse um, let's start Verse 9. Alright. Because if you read Daniel chapter 7, it speaks about the, um, you know, Daniel's vision of the four beasts. Alright. That was given for him to understand the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Alright. Or four, or four kingdoms that would come upon this earth. They're basically, the Assyrian Empire which later branched off to the Babylonian, but it was the same people. Then you had the uh, Persians and the Medes, and then you had the Greeks. And after the Greeks, you had the Romans, all right? From the Romans, you have the establishment of the EU, the beast, and uh, or NATO in America. And then from then, you have the judgment. That's it, that's Esau's time upon this earth, their rulership. All right, that's why the Lord said they were going to what? They were going to rule for a short season. All right. So let's read about it real quick on uh, the judgment day. Of when the Most High sits upon this. Uh, he already sitting on his throne, but when he hands out the judgment. And also when Yahweh hands out his reward. For the wicked and his reward for the righteous. All right. So this is uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. It says, uh, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Right? So all these thrones upon this earth are going to be cast down. Okay? At heaven, we, have, we have already witnessed all the thrones be cast down by the power of our Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Cast down the Assyrian Empire in 610 B.C. He cast down the uh, medio Persian Empire, or as you call it, the Assyrian Empire, then the uh, the medio Persian Empire in 330 uh, BC with Alexander. All right, and he cast down the Greek Empire with the transition into the triumvirate with Julius Caesar, all right, and Augustus Caesar, which later on was really in 4 BC, was really established. The Roman Empire, all right, on the scene. Um, from there, you have uh, the EU, NATO, and the times we're in now, where the judgment is about to be set. So I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So all those thrones have been cast down. And now we still have Esau ruling in this current time, so they got to be cast down. All right, that's how you know we're not out of here yet. So all the thrones have not been cast down yet. So you got these um, Jehovah Wickedness saying that the judgment day has already come. You know. But all the thrones have not been cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, right, the Most High. Because he's outside of our time period. You know, time is based upon days. And days are based upon the sun and the moon going around the earth. So that's like looking at his watch. He's not inside of the watch. He's outside of that. You know, he he watches the, the operations of the sun and the moon and the cosmos and controls it. All right? The sun goes around. You got one day, two day, and we wax old just like flowers, just like the trees, just like the grass. All right? But the spirit is present. The spirit is eternal. 
that's the ancient of days before days even existed all right whose garment was white as snow and that white represents his uh, righteousness all right whose head whose whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool just like his son all right and Yahweh Shai has uh, white and woolly hair as well. And Yahweh looks like a so-called black man. Okay. So this is uh, Psalms. Well, actually, uh, I'm going to keep reading a little bit more. His throne was like the fiery flame. All right. So his, his, his throne had uh, a, a glow around it, you know what we would call light or a glow they called a fiery flame you know it, it, his flame was on it, it was uh, uh ignited but it was like an emerald color all right scriptures say that i'm gonna get that too so his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire right the chariots got chariots all around him all right so let's get this real quick. Uh, Psalms 104 and um, 1. Blessed Yahweh. Bless Yahweh, O my soul. O, o Yahweh, my power. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. All right. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. So he, that, that's that white garment that he got on that you know um and that represents his throne when he's going to bring his judgment who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters who make of the clouds his chariot man so those are the chariots the fiery um vehicles all right right there it says wheels if you look at the wheels um clouds his chariot who walketh upon the wings of the wind who maketh the angels his spirits and ministers of flame of fire so let's get this real quick uh, <laughs> let me go to Daniel 7 I'm going to get this word wheels real quick I'm going to get sidetracked though Daniel 7 and 9 alright let's get this word wheels see what come up Okay, they just have they just have a wheel in general. But we know it's talking about a chariot, all right? So now um it says this verse ten, Daniel chapter seven and ten. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered, ministered unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before before him, the, and the judgment was set, and the books were open. So let's get into that now. All right, let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Revelation 5. And get a little understanding on that. <laughs> it says here, um, Revelation 5 and 11. All right. I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. So that's who, where it says um, thousands and thousands of ministers unto him around his throne. It's talking about the angels. All right. Um, and the beast and the elders, the rulers, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. All right, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and honor and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, so they're not creatures out there, they're creations. All right, the angels and the, and the, and the elect that are in the spirit, spirit realm. All right. So ultimately, Revelation 5 is a vision of what's about to happen. In the future 
Right, the elect are going to be up there too, praising the Lord on the firmament. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in, are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessed and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So that's about to happen, all right? So what we're reading about in Daniel 7 is a, is the precursor right before Revelation 5, 5 happens to where the whole world is going to have to give the most high praise. All right? But Daniel 7 breaks down Judgment Day to where the Lord is going to cast these thrones down and lead up to that point where, where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess the name of the Lord. All right? And Judgment. So, that's the uh, the wheels. We know that's the chariots. All right. And um, where it says a thousand thousand ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand. Let's get that real quick. I already got it. Yes, it a thousand times ten thousand. Right, saying with a loud voice, "Worthy is the Lamb." Okay. <clears throat> So, um, oh, yeah, I might need this one too. So now, it says, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Daniel 7. The judgment, the judgment was set, and that's why I want to get into the judgment. All right, let's get into the judgment real quick. All right. Okay, wherever it is. Okay, this is um let's get second Ezra's real quick. Let's talk about the judgment that's being set. Alright, I mean it's set in place. This is second Ezra six and eighteen. And it, and it said Verse 17, and it happened that when I had heard it, I stood upon my feet. So like it. Verse 16, and why? All right, 15. And therefore, when I speak, when it speaketh, be not afraid. This is Yahweh speaking to Ezra. All right. Not the Most High. This is Yahweh speaking. If you understand 2 Ezra chapter 6. And All right. First it was the angel. Then another angel stepped in and spoke with him. And therefore, when I when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end. All right. So Yahweh Shai was speaking to Ezra, just like he spoke to John the Revelator, speaking to him about the end, the judgment day. All right. What they call the Great White Throne Judgment. And the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech of these things trembleth, and is moved. For it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. It happened that when I had heard it, I stood up upon my feet and hearkened, and behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. And that's Yahweh's voice. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. So Yahweh just he coming in the spirit of Yahweh to visit the people that are upon the earth, bringing judgment. He said he's gonna visit with storm and all all kind of destruction. He said, "Think not that I come to send peace upon earth, but he came to bring a sword." That's what he visited him with. And I will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness, and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled, man. So who is hurting unjustly? The word hurt goes back to being wicked. All right, wicked acts, man. So they're, they're plaguing our people unjustly, you know, not, not according to righteousness. That's Esau. With their unrighteousness, man, with their wickedness. And when the, in the affliction of Zion, which would be the elect, their affliction is fulfilled. 
All right. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away, to my Esau's rulership, all right, it's, uh, uh, new heaven and new, new earth, which in the children of Israel and righteousness is going to reign supreme upon this earth. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away, see, all the thrones are being cast down, shall be finished, then will I show these tokens. The books shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall see all together. And that's the point. He said the books are open, all right, in Daniel chapter 7. See, it was told to Daniel to seal the book. And even uh, John the Revelator, certain things that was told to him, he was told to keep sealed and to seal it with, a, with a, through the spirit and today the Lord has allowed us to uh, open those books all right basically the truth bring out the truth yeah how has re, has prevailed to open the books and to let us know the prophecies and everything that's going on and how to please the father in these times <laughs> becoming a light to our path all right, so the books are, are open at this moment. And the hopeful elect can see. But when all hell break loose, that's when they're going to see all together, all the prophecies. There ain't going to be no more hiding it. You're going to know who the chosen are at some point. All right. So uh, that's what it means in Daniel chapter 7 and uh, 10 where it says, the judgment was set and the books were opened. So now you have the book of life and the book of uh, the dead, death for the wicked. All right, so let's get this, uh, Second Ezra 7 and 32. This is Second Ezra 7. Um, 31. This is a parable. And after seven days, the world that awaketh not shall be raised up, and that shall die that is corrupt. So the elect, once our judgment is complete, we're that world that's coming. All right, we're the world that's, that's being raised up, the cosmos. And that shall die that is corrupt, man. So Esau's world and the wicked, and two-thirds of our people that are being wicked in this age, that's why it says, uh, I think it's Zechariah, the Lord going to send the curse, meaning the chariots, and they're going to cut off those on this side, according to it, that are wicked on this in this age. All right? <laughs> so, and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. All right? And now, this is twofold, because we were asleep spiritually. And so shall the dust, those that dwell in silence, man. You know, so we're going to be, what, raised up as a nation. And yeah, you're going to have some people that get raised out of the grave. Right? Just like the Lord did in the uh, ancient times. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep. And so shall the dust those that dwell in silence. And the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto it. And that's talking about what? Salvation. When the Lord sends his angels out to gather up his elect all over the four corners of the earth all right and we were spiritually dead but now we're going to be what resurrected as a nation made to stand up again brought back to life and the most high shall appear upon the seat of judgment and misery shall pass away to my esau's rulership everything that comes with it Especially in Revelation chapter 6. Death and hell. That's what Esau is. And Habakkuk too. He enlarges his desires as hell. So all our pain and suffering. Is going to be what? Passed away. And the long suffering shall have an end. Right? Even the long suffering of our Lord Yahweh Shai. It's going to have an end. You're going to have peace. But judgment only shall remain. Alright? That's what the books are going to be open. And the judgment... It's, it's set. The books are open, also meaning we have this truth. All right, and the testimonies are going out and pointing, we point, uh, shaking the hand. 
marking marking the wicked and also the righteous. All right, um, thirty-five. So like it, but judgment only shall remain. See that we're coming into the time where the Lord is going to judge. All right, that's the only thing that's going to remain. And the reward shall be shown. See, and the reward for the elect is going to be shown to the elect. And the good deeds shall be a force, man. All the work that you're doing in, in good in good deed and righteousness, it's, that's going to have some force in that time. Right now, the, the Lord said, I know thy works and thy poverty, but thou art rich. All right? So they, they, these people will not acknowledge and cannot reward us for the work that we're doing. So your works that you're doing now, they're going to have force in that day. It's going to be uh, worth something. And wicked deeds shall bear no rule. So the Lord going to cast down all these thrones and all wickedness. You know? So that's what it's talking about in Daniel 7, where it says uh, the judgment... Is going to be set is for who? Let's get that real quick. Let's get Revelation 20. Uh, Revelation 20 and 10. All right, Revelation 20 and 10. I think we'll read all the way to 15. Um, and the devil this, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever man so, so Esau uh, even the land of the Roman Empire um, the land of Israel Especially America is going to have some destruction to it, but America is going to be wiped out. All right, just like the land of Israel. All right, that's what it means. And and their judgment is going to begin. It's going to be unto them like unto fire. All right, verse thirteen. And the sea gave up the dead. Now to understand this, uh, you would think that's talking about the physical dead, like you know. This is talking about spiritually. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. All right, now it's talking about who? And they were judged, every man according to their works, man. All right, because we we we're, we were dead as a nation, and now the Lord's going to resurrect us. Let's get this real quick. Go up to... Uh, so you can understand who the dead is talking about. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. So 2,000 years ago, our people were beheaded for this truth. And, the, and uh, John saw those same people same brothers sitting on thrones in the future. All right. For the word of Yahweh and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, their system, neither have received his MOTB upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shah a thousand years. So they're going to be the ones that usher in the kingdom, the hopeful elect. All right. That's the elect, the first fruits. So those are the ones that are the, the quick, which mean the righteous. It says what? So this lets you know that it's not talking about physically dead. This is a spiritual concept spoken of in Revelation 20, where it said the sea gave up the dead that was in it, meaning wherever our people are scattered at, that's where the Lord is going to send out his angels to gather the elect, as I just read through in the book of Ezra. All right, and the Lord is going to judge our people wherever they're at in the world whether they're righteous or wicked 
It says, what? But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. All right? So who's the rest of the dead? That's talking about these, these heathens. This is the first resurrection. All right? So the, this is the point where the Lord raises up the elect of Israel, and they're going to be sitting on thrones. All right? He's going to resurrect us as a nation. The word resurrect means to stand up again. All right, so this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. They'll let you know that they're going to be alive. This is a judgment. It's going to be on people that are going to be living and breathing. But they're considered dead as a nation until the Lord gives us life. All right, and these heathens are just known as the dead anyway. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. All right, this first standing up again of our nation. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Yahweh Shai and shall reign with him a thousand years and even till eternity and for, forever and ever. But from that point, that thousand year period, that's when Esau is going to be wiped off the earth after that. All right? So yeah, let's get back down to this. Uh, verse 20, Revelation 20. 12 and I saw the dead small and great stand before the most high all right so they weren't standing before him they were standing before his throne which is on upon this earth and the books were open see the books are open now okay and another book was open which is the book of life so the book that's, that's going to judge the dead then you have a book that deals with us well the hopeful elect all right, the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, man. All right, so we represent the dead as well as far as being a nation. The Lord going to bring us to life, have, have access to the tree of life. So he's going to judge the whole world according to their works. And, and all right, so... Let's get a little bit further, all right, because this is a parable, excuse me, spoken of in Daniel chapter 7, where it says uh, the, the judgment was set and the books were open. All right, so let's get this. Uh, yep. Okay, I already got that one. Let's get to Revelation 11. Eleven and eighteen. Revelation eleven and fourteen. Alright. The second woe is passed, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly, right? Because you're gonna have a build up with World War Three. You know, it's not going to happen, just a missile fall, and then it's like, boom, that's it. It's going to be a process, you know, proxy war, uh, uh, hit and hit back wars where they're shooting missiles back and forth. Um, and then at some point, I always say, behold, the third woe coming quickly, but the third woe is going to be fought with nuclear fire. So it's going to be a major quick buildup to a climax point. To where America gonna be destroyed. All right. Ultimately, to set to set forward the judgment, judgment day. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, "The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His His anointed, and He shall reign forever and ever." See, that's not gonna be just for a thousand years. It's gonna be forever and ever. It's gonna reign forever and ever. And the hopeful elect, or the elect, are going to reign for a thousand years too. And then beyond that, forever and ever. Meaning being present. No past, just future. <laughs> All right, so um, so the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. That's what I, uh, I beheld to the thrones were cast down. 
in the ancient of days, that's it, Yahweh. All right. And the four and twenty elders which sat before uh, Yahweh on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped. This is happening out in the heavens, saying, We give thee thanks, O Yahweh, our Lord Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Right? So you got to think about people like our Bivens, King Masha. Elder Yaquab, they're all out there saying this to the Lord in the heavens. And the nations, and the nations were angry. So this is going to happen. The elect are going to say this too. Because this is this is a judgment that's about to happen. All right. The nations were angry, and the wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged. See that? And the dead talking about who the uh, the wicked. All right, even even two thirds of our people. And th that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And that's the dead. Now, the prophets are gonna get reward. All right, because we're dead as a nation. But now the Lord is bringing us to life, ultimately for life eternal, all right, and righteousness. And the temple of Yahweh was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of the testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. That means judgment was being cast out of his throne. All right, so... Get something real quick. Revelation four and eight. All right. Uh, that's right. So right here where it says, uh, go over here. Revelations, no Daniel seven and nine. A fiery stream issued. 7 and 10 a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him thousands and thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before before him all right and this is when this is right now and ultimately on judgment day all right when the elect and the angels and the the, the, the uh you know gonna be praising the most high that's what Daniel Daniel had a vision of the books being open and all the thrones being cast down man so that's a future prophecy that's about to happen but the books are open now too before the firmament all right let's get that uh, revelations 22 and 12 all right revelation I'm gonna start from revelations 5. Um, and nine, and they sung as it, and they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our, our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth." All right, so that's a future statement that's going to come from the elect when they get delivered. And they're going to say this to the Lord on Judgment Day. You know, thou has made us to reign and become kings and priests. All right. So, um, all right, let's end it with this right here. Revelation uh, 22 and 12. Revelation 22 and 12. The way it says the books are open, you know. Right here it says Revelation 22 and 12. 11. That's right. Verse 9. 
Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of the, this book, worship Yahweh. And he, and he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. All right, we made it open and for us to get this truth. And the prophecy is basically, that's what the books being open means. Us being able to understand the prophecies and to speak the prophecies, man. And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. See, they're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. That's the, the, the quick, right? Let me get that too. Uh, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work as his work shall be. And he said, Furthermore, I am Alpha, and furthermore, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, so, yeah, man. Uh, verse 18. For I testify unto, unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any... Man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. All right? So the judgment is, is, is being set right now. It's called a sift, pushing the wicked to the left and the righteous to the right. And if any man shall take away from the words of the pro book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life. It goes hand in hand. So the, the books are open. We're able to understand the prophecies. But if people that are not speaking right according to his word and spirit of truth and prophecy, then they're going to be judged with the dead. All right? Considered uh, still amongst the congregation of the dead. And out of the holy city, so he's going to take that person's name, their part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testify of these things saith, surely I come quickly. Man, ain't no joke, right? So, um, let me get this real quick. I don't know if I got it. Yeah, that's right. This is First Timothy 4 and 1. 4 and, I charge thee, therefore, before Yahweh, and the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So that's what it's talking about, judging the quick and the dead. He's not talking about physically dead, he's talking about what? The quick meaning what? Lively or righteous, and the dead represent the wicked. So Yahweh Shai, the Most High is giving that judgment to Yahweh Shai. All right, so the books are open, uh, meaning these prophecies. And us being able to understand the prophecies and the book of life which is set up for the elect and the book of the, uh, of the judgment for the dead is open as well all right and you want we want our name that's right let's get this real quick we want our names to be called in heaven All right, so Luke 10 and 20, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, man. That's when the elect get risen up. Notwithstanding, meaning although, in this rejoice not. So don't, don't just rejoice about spiritual power or uh, that's it, you know, being able to uh, put hell on Esau in the kingdom. We, we would just be tyrants then. He said, but, he said, don't rejoice that the spirits are made subject unto you. It has nothing to the Lord. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
All right, and that's what we want. We want our names to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All right, when the when the when the judgment is set. All right, because the books are open, and the judgment being set for for Esau and his wicked kingdom upon this earth. All right, so let's read it again and close out on it. This is Daniel seven and nine. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. See, it should make more sense. And the Ancient of Days did sit, talking about the Most High, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair, the hair of his head, like the pure wool. And you can read about him, how he looks in Revelation 4. And his throne was like the fiery flame. Let's get that real quick, just briefly. Revelation 4. All right. That's right, man. Revelation 4 and 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So that voice sounded like a trumpet. It sounded like reverberation. You know, you think about reverb or, you know, a powerful voice. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. All right, so he took his position for judgment. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper, meaning dark brown, and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. See, he had fire about the throne, a rainbow, light, in the sight unto like an emerald. That's why I said the fire looked green, the emerald. So you got light all around this throne, but it looked like Emerald City. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats were four and twenty, you know, clothed in white raiment. Um, so that's it, man. All right. You know, you can read that for yourself, Revelation chapter four. I did a lesson on the uh, going to the playlist or something. So that's it, man. Revelation 7 and 10. A fiery stream, what's it like it? Who, 7 and 9. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, just like Yahweh Or Yahweh is just like him. And his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So that's them chariots. <laughs> And fiery streams issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered, as you can read of in Revelation 5, where it speaks about the angels and, and the, the hopeful elect ministering to the Father and saying, thank you, the water, you know. Um, stood before him, and the judgment was set, and the books were open, man. All right, so, yeah, man, so the book of life and the book of the, uh, for the dead, <laughs> you know, so that's what we're hoping for, access to uh, life eternal. All right. So, uh, yeah. Verse 11, I beheld because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. All right, so. That's right, man. So I'm going to end it there. Hopefully that was edifying, man. Get some understanding on the books being open. Represent uh, us being in this truth. And be, the Lord giving a, re a reward out for those that whose names are written in the book of life. And giving the judgment out when the judgment is set. For those that are set up for destruction. Alright, so then I'm gonna say uh, shalom.